Even if you're already prepared for the gore fest that is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, some scenes are so shocking that they'll make even the most stalwart of slasher fans squirm. Let's take a look at Pooh and Piglet's most egregious acts of violence. For all its nonsensical stuff and fluff, one must give credit where credit is due. As an independent, low-budget film, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey occasionally attempts to prove itself stylistically alongside your favorite big-budget horror spectaculars. One such moment is toward the end of the film when Maria tries to escape Pooh's wrath by driving away in a truck. Pooh throws Jess's severed head onto Maria's windshield, and in a panic, Maria activates the windshield wipers. This woefully makes the situation much worse, spewing Jess's blood and brains from the inside of her head all over the windshield. It's a truly macabre visual that stands out as an inventive shot that would have felt at home in a horror movie not revolving around Pooh and Piglet as serial killers. As the film progresses, the audience learns that Pooh doesn't just dispose of the bodies after he kills people. That's where the movie's title comes into play. Blood and Honey isn't merely a catchy name, it's Pooh's preferred combination of condiments. After killing his victims, Pooh makes a feast of their remains, but not before dripping honey all over the dead bodies. Yum, yum. In a particularly gross moment, Pooh eats the remains of one of his victims and the camera lingers on the bear enjoying his dinner. In extreme close-up shots, Pooh's face fills the entire screen, his signature combo of blood and honey smeared across his face and dripping from his mouth as he chows down on handfuls of flesh. Pooh Bear never seems to kill anyone the same way twice. A solid example of his eclectic taste in over-the-top violence is when he goes full Fargo and throws Tina into a wood chipper. Tina doesn't go down without a fight, kicking and screaming as Pooh unceremoniously hoists her into the machine. Rather than skipping ahead to the inevitable aftermath, filmmakers keep the audience in the moment with Pooh as the wood chipper does its thing. This technique works double time by the audience bracing themselves for impact, perhaps knowing what comes next, and then having to actually sit through the unspeakable scene they predicted. Pooh stands forebodingly above the machine while it destroys Tina's body, with the audience looking directly up at Pooh from ground level. The horrific sounds of the wood chipper in the background accentuate the visual of blood occasionally spattering onto Pooh's face. He's unfazed by the mess, continuing to just watch it all go down as his face gets bloodier by the second. Piglet's weapon of choice is a sledgehammer. He carries it menacingly as he confronts Alice and Zoe at the rental house's indoor pool. When Zoe falls into the pool, Piglet dives right behind her, his sledgehammer at the ready. Much like the shark in Jaws, Piglet swims towards his prey and goes in for the kill. The camera lingers underwater as she tries to get away from him. Once Piglet reaches Zoe, with a swing of his sledgehammer, the hog sends the girl's head careening across the pool, the rest of her body sinking to the bottom. The shot is admittedly a bit cinematic, at least given the context of the film. Throughout Blood and Honey, Pooh reveals himself to be a bear of versatile talents rather than a bear of very little brain, as his saying goes from the old animated films. One skill he doesn't utilize until the end of the movie is slicing off half of a man's face with his bare hands. <laughs> Get it? Well, maybe. With a swift chop, Pooh swipes his hand across the side of a man's face, completely removing the flesh and exposing the tissue within. The unlucky man is one of four guys who attempt to help Maria and Jess by fighting back against Pooh's tirade. The men never stood a chance. During the prologue, Pooh and Piglet kill Eeyore. While startling, it's not exactly brutal for the purposes of this list because it's animated with rough hand-drawn sketches. The audience never sees anything particularly nasty from the moment. Later on, though, Eeyore's tail serves a much more disturbing purpose for one of the most horrific scenes in the whole movie. After killing Christopher Robin's wife, Pooh and Piglet keep Christopher Robin as their prisoner, hanging him by his hands shirtless in their treehouse. A skeleton sits in the corner, implied to be all that's left of poor Mary. Not only have Pooh and Piglet eaten her, but they've also recycled her blood and funneled it through a showerhead that they spray onto Christopher Robin. Covered in his own dead wife's blood, Christopher Robin screams in anguish. But that's not all. Picking up a long tail of hair hanging on the wall, recognizable as once belonging to Eeyore, Pooh whips Christopher Robin's back. With each lash, Christopher Robin shrieks. When it's all over, he's left with unsettling scars across his entire back. It's a legitimately disturbing scene. We used to be friends, why are you doing this, please? You know the feeling. That moment in a horror movie when the action on the screen is so viscerally scary that the audience squirms, gasps, and maybe even screams. Rather than being undesirable, though, this sensation is partly why you came to the movies. That experience with the audience elevates the film to something more than just images on a screen. 
If one were to boil down the appeal of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey to the aforementioned shared oxymoronic feeling of horrified delight in the theater, and furthermore select one moment from the film to embody that feeling more than anything else, it has to be the murder of Lara. Piglet ties Lara's hands behind her back and ropes her to the driveway. Behind the wheel of a car, Pooh smiles with deranged glee as he slowly drives the car toward Lara. The camera focuses on a close-up of Lara's face wedged against the cement driveway, the wheels inching closer to her. Just when the audience thinks the camera will surely break away and not show the impending doom, the shot remains firmly in place. In a moment straight out of a nightmare, the tire crushes Lara's skull. Her brain and accompanying guts spill out of her open head, and her eyes pop from their sockets. 